Well, in addition to being a collector, apparently I'm a costumer now as well. Andor showed me one of the coolest looking Imperial costumes I have seen in a while outside of Stormtroopers, and that is this Imperial Security Bureau group of people. And they are right up my alley. Some of them are old, they're graying, they're balding. Some of them are a little fatter. I'm like, wow, talking about a costume that was custom made for someone like me. So I finally finished as much as I'm going to get on this costume, and I'm going to show you how you can do the same. Come on in, let's get into this. All right, welcome to another episode of Paul's Collectibles. It's good to have you, thanks for joining me. Today we're gonna to be doing something that I don't normally do around here. We're gonna take a look at an entire costume that I've put together of one of the characters from Andor, the Imperial Security Bureau Officer. Now, there's a bunch of different variations of this, but the one I'm going for is the one that looks like this, not the one that looks like this. And it's important to understand the vast majority of this costume is actually 501st Legion approvable. If you're not familiar with the 501st Legion, they're a worldwide costuming organization that has some pretty high standards for joining their group. And they have very specific requirements for certain costumes to make sure that they're as screen accurate as possible. Most of this costume, like I said, is 501st appro approvable, but as we go down, I'll show you the items that are not. And it's important that you pay attention to those because I don't want you to buy one of those and then say, hey, Paul led me in the wrong direction because I can't get into the costume club of my choice because of what he told me. So pay close attention to that. Also, most of these items are fairly pricey. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I'm sure there's other places where you can find them less expensive, but I went for the stuff that I know that was gonna be fairly good to very good quality that would last me for a while. Plus, since I don't do a lot of costuming, this is probably the only one of maybe two I'll ever do. And I will link all the websites that I mentioned down below because these parts and pieces and clothes came from all over the world, literally. And all of the links will be down below and I will reiterate the names of those companies as I go along so you can keep track. But with that, let's get all of these items in front of some lights, take a good look at them, I'll show you the quality and then tell you where you can get them should you decide to enjoy a costume from the Imperial Security Bureau as well and join the Empire. Okay, and to keep life simple, we're gonna start from head to toe with the hat. Now this is the hat that I use for the costume. It is from a company called Imperial Boots. And as you can see, if I flip it back, you can see their logo on the back. Keep trooping Imperial Boots. This is a medium. Now I didn't originally buy this to put on my head. I have nearly a size eight head. So you'll see in the fit, I probably should have got a large if I was gonna wear it. But this one will still go on my head. It's a good quality. This is obviously nice and floppy like it's supposed to be. And it kind of bunches up. It's lined with like satin on the inside or whatever that is. It's nice and comfortable. It doesn't get too hot, which is great. It's stitched very well. And the code piece on the front here came with it and it just screws in underneath there like this. You can see you just screw it in with a uh, screw and a washer and it just stays right on there. And that is the hat I'm using. Like I said, it comes from Imperial Boots and you can find them on their website currently. Next up, we have the tunic. Now the tunic that I'm using is from a company called Denuo Novo and this Denuo Novo and this is an XXL. For reference, I'm 6 foot 3 and I weigh 250 pounds. I'm kind of a bigger guy, so that'll give you an idea, but my recommendation is that you always measure very well before you order these things. And if you have to, go a little bigger than a little smaller. Now this is a phenomenal quality. It's like a real jacket from a suit. It's 65% cotton, 35% polyester, and it needs to be dry cleaned with and warm ironed only. But as you can see, an absolute thing of beauty. They did such a good job. These snaps are like these, they're almost like baby jammy snaps or something. I'm not sure the best way to describe them, but the neck here has the hook and loop enclosure which is required and it's very screen accurate it hooks underneath up here so it comes across your breast and then this part comes across here and snaps and then the snaps go all the way down the interior 
and so it's got a nice snug fit it's got on the exterior it's got both of the code cylinder pockets as you can see here and the interior is absolutely stunning it's lined like a real jacket this is a fairly expensive piece of the costume and like i said it comes from de nuo novo and they charge a lot of money for their stuff anyway but this jacket is just it's heavy grade heavy gauge and very 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 high quality and what i also like about it is across the waistline here they've put this seam so you know exactly where the belt that goes over top of it is supposed to go and that goes all the way around the back and it's got the seams in the back here as you can see and you'll have to excuse all of my wrinkles i haven't taken it to the dry cleaners yet but a very fun piece kind of a pain in the butt to take care of to be honest with you because it's white so i have to be very careful and an interesting thing about this is that it's actually director krennic's tunic so it comes with these four plastic receiver snaps that are on here 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 and here and that way you can attach the cape to it. But if you're not doing director Krennic, these can be cut off with like a razor blade or something. They are made out of plastic and they're just sewn in. So something to keep in mind. And since we're on the tunic, let's talk about the rank plaque, which is captain for Imperial Security Bureau and the um, cylinders. Now the rank plaque is just magnetized on here. It comes right off just like this and it's from a company called Bailey's Builds and as you can see the magnet just goes on the back like that and it's like three rare earth magnets they're very very powerful <laughs> there we go it's easier to just slide them off and that's how you can attach the rank to the tunic like I said Bailey's Builds and that's where these code cylinders came from as well now the weird thing about this tunic is that the holes for the pockets here are not very deep they're really shallow and these code cylinders are supposed to be a lot longer but i had to dremel them off so they would fit in and actually attach and then this hook is two pieces this part attaches here and then this part goes up underneath it and then this little blue part will come out you can order these in a variety of different colors and whether or not there's tubes or whether or not there's rubber on the bottom i just got the basic one and this is from the um movies in the original trilogy I, I original trilogy i believe you can also get this with the brass clip here as you see in some of the movies and then those just go right in the pockets and clip right on and you'd never know that that wasn't what they were supposed to look like but there it is that's the tunic it's the director krennic tunic with the removable snaps from de nuo novo and i got an xxl next up we have the outer belt now the outer belt i'm using comes from imperial boots as well now let's take these boxes off because i'll talk about these separately but when you order this from imperial boots it comes with the belt buckle and it comes with the belt and the belt buckle is the standard hook kind it just goes into a belt loop and then this is wrapped around the other side of the belt buckle and is toggled in or bolted in like looks like there's a screw there you could take that out if you wanted to but it comes like this now the hard part about this is this needs to be flattened out a little bit because when i put the belt on it wants to push it uh, this way the belt buckle and it looks kind of funny but what i love about this belt as opposed to the one that a novos sells is a novos belt on the other side here comes with a bunch of holes but when you buy this one from imperial boots they'll send you this belt and it's blank all the way around and they send you a very high quality metal belt hole punch so that you can measure this exactly where you want to put it and then punch your hole exactly at the right spot and then it will be tailored specifically for you so imperial boots for the belt and the belt buckle they come as a uh, package now let's talk about those boxes now I believe these are optional, but I'm not sure. But if you look at Andor, they're all wearing them. And this came from the same company that did the rank plaque and the code cylinders called Bailey's Builds. It's an Etsy shop. She's a 501st member. And what I love about these is they're super light because they're aluminum. And they also open up in case you like wanna put something in there, I guess. And they just clip on with standard. If I can get these back together there we go they just clip on with these standard belt clips as you can see and you can get them so they're oriented like this or oriented like this but most of the officers in the military or the uh, imperial military that i've seen wearing them have them oriented in a vertical position and they come as a pair from bailey's builds etsy shop and then they just go right on the front of the belt 
Just like that, nice and simple, and you're ready to go. Okay, now let's talk about the pants. Once again, these come from Imperial Boots. I got the largest size you can get, 2XL, because I'm a big dude. I think I've got like a 38 or a 40 waist. I'm working on that, by the way. But these are what are called jodhpurs. And what that means is when you lay them out, it's like such, right here, they, they fan out before they start coming down to your knee. They billow or bag you out like the Nazi officers used to wear those in World War II. And you'll see like a lot of motorcycle uh, riders wear these types of things. They're not unique to uh, Germany or the Imperial Security Bureau. But like I said, these are called Jodhpurs. I think it's J-O-D-P-U-H-R-S. And these are from Imperial Boots. And these are once again, great high quality. What I love about these is they have boot, uh, belt loops, which we'll talk about in a second. The fly is done completely with strong sewn in Velcro. The back is elastic. So you get a little bit of play in there. They do have pockets, but with that tunic on, it would be difficult to use the pockets if you ask me. But the only thing I don't like about these is down at the bottom, they taper. And remember this part has to go inside a boot. So it has all these lace holes that you're supposed to lace them together with. And I find that that just adds a lot of extra crap that you're trying to jam down into the boot. So here's a little hint if you decide to buy these. When you're getting into this costume, my recommendation is you always dress from bottom to top. So put the pants on and then leave them loose and actually pull them down just below your buttocks. I know that sounds strange. And then attach some, so I have just Velcro in here that I have adhesively put in there. And then you put the pants on and then while they're still loose up at the top, you Velcro these parts together down at your ankle and then you pull your boots on over top of all of this stuff and then you stand up and pull the pants up and that way everything stays down inside the boot and they're nice and tight but great good quality pants as you can see there's lots of good quality seams and stitches everything imperial boots does to my knowledge is great quality and i can highly recommend them but let's talk about the belt that you might want to use with these now as i mentioned these do have belt loops. Now I'm lucky. I'm kind of a big dude. So when I Velcro this thing, it's good and tight and these pants don't slide down on me. But if you have to use a belt, you don't want a belt that has like a big belt buckle up at the front here because then it'll bulge out either underneath the belt that you're wearing over top of your tunic or it'll put a bulge in your tunic. So you can go to Safari Land website and this is what's called the standard shooters underbelt. As you can see here, if you're not familiar with Safari Land, they have like a deer for their logo and it's red. But this is just all what I would like to call the fuzzy Velcro on the outside. And then there's one part on the inside here that has the male part of it or the hook part of it. This is the loop part, I guess. And then that just Velcros together. And what you can do is you can thread that through the belt loops and tighten it up and that'll hold the belt up. But as you can see, there's very, very minimal bulging with that, and that'll help keep the costume contoured on the front and looking good. And you can get these in uniform stores or online or anything like that. I have a bunch of these because my wife is a professional competition shooter, and they wear these through their pants, and then her belt goes on over top of that, and it Velcros to the top of this, which is why you see all this, and it holds everything in place. So if you need a belt, that's what I'm recommending you get right there. Now we're gonna talk about gloves. Now. I'm not even gonna show you the gloves I have because they're from my transport trooper costume and they're not even close to being what you're supposed to wear with this costume. These gloves right here are what I recommend you get for an Imperial officer from Imperial Boots. Once again, they're just clean, smooth leather gloves and they're not, they don't have any Velcro enclosures or no stitching on them or anything. So that's what you're gonna to need to use if you decide that you wanna go with gloves. But as I understand it, gloves are optional for this costume. It's your call. And finally, let's talk about what is most likely going to be the other most expensive piece in this costume in addition to the tunic, and that's the boots. Now, I'm going to move one of these out of the way, and I'll show you the boots I have, but I'm going to start off right off the bat by saying these are not 501st approvable, and we'll talk about why in just a second. I already have these because I used to ride motorcycles professionally a few years back, and we had to have these. So these are all leather, all leather uppers. They're from a brand called Effingham. You can just barely see it in there anymore it's kind of worn off um, and they're comfortable for me they're all worn in as you can see they're pretty used and because I already had these this is just what I'm wearing in my picture now they have to be smooth on the outside like this for 501st approvable or approval they can have this uh, buckle on the outside and if you look closely at Andor a lot of the officers do have this 
or they can also have a zipper on the inside. Now, my recommendation is this, if you can, get the ones with the zipper on the inside, they're 10,000 times easier to get on. These are a bear to get on and off. But what they cannot have, unfortunately, and mine does, are these laces on the front. There can be no laces on the boots anywhere. Now, I'm not going for 501st approval, so laces on the front, whippity flippity for me, right? They look great in photos and pictures, and if I decide to answer the door for Halloween dressed as an ISB officer, but that's what I use. Now, you can get the cheapest versions that I've been able to find off of Amazon, as you can see right here. And I've also been able to find on Imperial Boots, once again, their website, this quality type of officer boot as well. Now, if you're going for 501st approval, you don't want any surprises or anything like that, my recommendation is that you just get the ones from Imperial Boots, pay the money and go for it. Or you can try these from Amazon and see what the quality is like. As you can see from the comments, if you go there, people have had mixed feelings about those boots. But there you have it. That's the entire costume that I put together to be an Imperial Security Bureau officer from Andor. I appreciate you joining me on this little journey up and down my costume. And if you're not a subscriber, maybe consider doing that for me. That's a great way to support my efforts here at Paul's Collectibles. And if you're already a subscriber or somebody who's been watching my videos for a while, you know I greatly appreciate you. But with that, I'll see you on the next video.